It's The Pet Show with Dr. Katie Nelson. Hello everybody and welcome to The Pet Show with Dr. Katie. I'm Dr. Katie Nelson and in this half hour we always focus on everything about your beloved pets from health to proper care to fun and we always want to know about you and your pets too so feel free to, feel free to email me at petshow, all one word, at news8.net. Coming up on the show today, if you think only dogs can learn tricks, you are wrong, my friends. We'll learn some cool ways to train your other furry or feathered friends, plus some tips on traveling with your pets. And as always, an adorable adoptable from the Animal Welfare League of Alexandria. But let's begin with this week's Shedline News. This is animal news that you may or may not have heard about. Rusty the Red Panda returned to his exhibit at the National Zoo this week. You'll remember Rusty escaped from the same enclosure June 23rd. He was found the next day hanging out in Adams Morgan. After two weeks of observation, the zoo says Rusty is ready to resume his normal routine. I wonder what exactly that is for a panda. There's a new trend in medicine, but it has nothing to do with humans. A growing number of animals are having stem cell transplants. Ralph here is one of them. The 10-month-old pug has a degenerative condition in his leg that will get worse as he ages. He underwent surgery in Washington State and came through with flying colors. Stem cell transplants are normally reserved for, hum for humans, but vets all over the country are performing them now on dogs, cats, and even horses. The National Institute of Health has announced they will stop using chimps for government research, saying humans' closest relatives deserve special respect. More than 300 chimps could end up in animal sanctuaries. A few will be kept on retainer to be used only for life-saving research that cannot be done in any other way. Congratulations to the NIH. That is a fantastic decision. So our first guest, Barbara Heidenreich, has always known that animals were her calling. She's worked with training birds as well as staff members in numerous zoos around the country. Barbara's written two books, started Good Bird Magazine, and produced a series of instructional parrot and bunny training DVDs. Her teachings and love of animals are truly unmatched, and today we're happy to welcome her back to the pet show to get some training, some tips on training our pets other than dogs. That's right. Which All those great. other little critters can learn things too. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, we, we've had you on here before and we had a lot of fun with you here before. This was before Christmas, I believe, that you were here and we talked about birds at that point, but it's not just birds that you do. I mean, you even have a new website because it's not just birds that you do. That's right. My, my new website's called, called Barbara's Fat with two Fs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is <laughs> brave and memorable. <laughs> I know. Well, I figured, like I said, it's either ironic or it's true. Well, well I whatever your choice is for that day. <laughs> but it stands for force-free animal training because really what I teach is a very kind and gentle approach to animal training. We're not using any aversives, or aversives. we're not being coercive. The animal's really a voluntary participant and when he does things, good things happen. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get to have a great relationship with your animal. And your kids and your husband or wife. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's basically a lesson for life right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to tell people it's not just about solving behavior problems, which mm -hmm. is usually the case that that people are looking for help for behavior problems. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, training your pet to do some cute little tricks like teaching your rabbit to play the piano or um, having a guinea pig turn in a circle or maybe teaching your parrot to wave. My parrot actually paints. Oh <laughs> That's my one gosh. of the things she does. But all those things can help enhance your relationship with your animal because what's happening the whole time is your animal's learning that actions he does gets reinforced or rewarded uh -huh. and that's paired with you and suddenly you become even more valuable in their life because all these good things are happening when they're around you. Yeah. The other thing I love about it is if you're trying to help your pet get to know strangers because right. some animals aren't always responsive to new people like Absolutely. especially some of our parrots. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is you can train a behavior like a wave mm -hmm. or a turnaround and those are behaviors where you don't actually have to touch the animal. So mm -hmm. if your friend is coming to, over to the house and you want to introduce your parrot to your friend instead of saying here my bird, which right. your bird might not be ready for, right. you can say, well, why don't you wave at him, mm -hmm. and maybe he'll wave back, and then you can give him a treat. Ah. And the way it works is that the bird has already learned that doing this behavior means good things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So he's already ready for something good to happen, mm -hmm. and now it's being associated with this stranger that he may not have met before. So mm -hmm. it actually can help build relationships with strangers. It's to sort of decrease the stranger danger that some of them have. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. It, it helps to have that behavior, that action for the animal to do mm -hmm. as opposed to just giving a treat because yeah. that that action has history of, of good things happening with right, it. Right, right. Yeah. It it's a learned a learned event. I like that. So 
How difficult is this? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how, on a scale of one to ten, how difficult is this? Super to easy. There's really a, super easy. There's lots of behaviors that you can teach in just one 20-minute training session. Seriously? Yeah. So one of my favorites is a turnaround, mm -hmm. uh, and the way that you train it is: say you've got a, a parrot that's sitting on a perch. I'm going to pretend my arm is the perch, okay. and you've got a little treat in your hand. You can take that treat and just make a circle underneath the perch, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the birds will just follow that treat. Okay. And then as soon as he makes the circle, you give him the treat. Mm -hmm. And then over time, what you're going to do is you're going to start hi hiding the treat because you don't want him to have to be dependent on seeing the right. goodie. And you'll hide it in your hand, and you'll make that circle just a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And eventually, you're just going, turn around, and he'll learn that he needs to turn in the circle to get that treat. And most of the time, you can train that in one training session. Oh, we darn. Yeah. You can't do that with dogs, that's for sure. Oh, sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, Poppy here, which you guys probably can't even tell that Poppy's here, but there's this little head poking up. <laughs> Poppy here is my, he's my sweet boy, but Maybe yeah. not the, maybe not the smartest. Well, he doesn't the, have a problem with strangers. That's no, for sure. No, he doesn't. He's a super yeah. friendly boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can also train that behavior with other animals, too. So I have uh, a pet rabbit and, and pet guinea pigs, and they all know how to turn around on cue as well. But instead of going underneath them, we go over the top of them with a little treat. Wow. Now, if people want to learn how to do this, we're showing you've got a wide array of things here that people can order. They can learn how to do this. You teach them in a very pleasant, easy way, just like you've done right now, <laughs> how to do all these things. So if anybody's interested in teaching all these wonderful things, you've got a vast array of things you can do. And you can find them all on your website correct? That's right. If they visit Barbara's Fat, they can find links to uh, order all those products and, and get started training their parrot to do, or their other animal, to do some nice, cute animal tricks and help build that bond with themselves and with strangers. We love that. Well, we would love to have you back. Oh, well, thank you. I'd Any, love to come back. Anytime you're around, we'd love to have you back. Next time, we'll talk about chickens like we just talked about before Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk chickens. All right. We'll <laughs> talk chickens when we, when we have Barbara back. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll get some advice on traveling with your pets. Are you making summer vacation plans? Make sure you don't forget to include your four-legged family members. Whether you're hitting the road or flying in the friendly skies, you want to make sure that your pet is comfortable and safe. Amy DePauli is with Pet Value, and she joins us today with some tips on traveling with your pets. Thank you so much Absolutely. for coming to the pet show today, Thank Amy. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, let's start with road warriors. So, yes. you know, we we're just talking, you came down from Philly today. I did. Yes, I did. Not too bad of a drive, but if you had had a dog bouncing around the car, it might have made for a little bit of distraction. Absolutely. Um, and one of the big things that's happening right now is uh, a, a big focus on having a distracted driver, as we know with texting and driving mm -hmm. or, or you know, needing to use the hands-free devices and things like that. Now they're, the uh, law enforcement sort of extending that focus to include driving with your pets. And mm -hmm. many of of our um, many of our states have pretty um, significant fines and things like that yeah. if you're driving with your dog uh, or your cat that uh, could cause a distraction to you so it's important that we follow a few simple tips and mm -hmm. and I can share those with you now absolutely let's show us you guys have some pretty cool products at yes. value for keeping them safe and keeping them sure. off of your lap and out of your face exactly <laughs> so the rule number one um, is that you always want to make sure that your dog is harnessed um, into the car so that it serves more or less as a seatbelt for right. your dog and we and have so an example here on Poppy. we do Poppy. Poppy. Up. Poppy, stand up. Let's show. Hi, Poppy. There we go. So and we've got an example to look perfect of on Poppy. It does. It <laughs> fit him perfectly. It's like it was made for him. Um, and so this one basically goes directly around, just like a normal harness. Yes. But exactly. then um, you put your seatbelt through. It, it's actually on the front. There's oh, on a, the front. a piece that has a carabiner attached to it, which is not on there at the moment. But the carabiner would then attach to right the seatbelt. So uh, it keeps the dog, um, you know, so they can move about, right. but they're still they're still safe uh, in the car. So that's rule number one. They come in various sizes so you know you just want to check with um, as we like to call it your local pet expert as mm -hmm. far as what is the right size for your dog which in DC if you're wondering that's me <laughs> <laughs> or pet value <laughs> or pet value okay okay <laughs> um, and uh, if you have a small a, a harness should always be used if you have a small dog and you would put your dog in the front mm -hmm. seat or something like that we also recommend that you use um, that you use a booster seat which mm -hmm. is like what we have like right here right here 
Exactly. Um, and there are many different things that you can use to kind of keep your dog safe in the car um, while keeping your car safe. There are hammocks that keep your, you know, keep your seats intact. They kind of hang over your seat. You can still use your harness with it. It blocks the, um, it's kind of a barrier sort of effect so the dog can't get into the front seat. Mm -hmm. um, it blocks that open area. So that's an important thing too. Um, so those are kind of the key things that you want to think about when you're traveling with your dog in your car. Right. It's definitely making sure that they are restrained at all right. times. And you know, one of the other things too, I mean, definitely because of distraction, I mean, it's very difficult to drive if you've got a little dog crawling all over your lap. Sure. But the other thing is too, especially with a dog the size of Poppy, mm -hmm. if you are in an accident, they can become a massive projectile in your car Absolutely. and can be extremely dangerous if you were to get into an accident. So having them restrained is not only helpful to dis you know keep distractions away, but also could potentially save the life of That's you or one of your children. Right. Yep. So now, if we're going to get on an airplane, sure. What um, do we need to have? I, the, the number one thing is that you check with your airline and you check with the TSA before you go to uh, the airport because you want to make sure that you have all of the right size uh, and, and weight and all of that kind of stuff for the proper carrier. They change those things all the time and the right. last thing you want to do is get to the airport and have to buy a new ticket because you missed your first flight because right. Fido or whoever <laughs> couldn't Isn't come with you. So we'll have to move through this part a little yep. bit quickly. but. So you make, want to make sure that it's an airline approved carrier exactly. mm -hmm. and if um, they are flying in the cargo area then you definitely need to make sure that it's not too hot or too cold for them to fly. Absolutely. And then finally we've got some little products here for travel anxiety as Yes well. and uh, you know pets they, they get very anxious about flying and so there's lots of different natural supplements that you can give your pet, um, cat or dog, that help them with some of those anxiety issues. There's uh, uh, one here that we're showing that is made specifically for uh, travel, but there are other calming supplements. And, and another thing to always make sure of is that your pet is hydrated Absolutely. and uh, give them their comforts of home to make them as comfortable as they can and, and feel as relaxed as they can. So we have a little um, cute little easy piece here that you can just attach to the top of a water bottle, which is a great way to hydrate your pet regularly. Awesome. And you guys have this wonderful travel section in all of your stores. All of our Pet Value stores, absolutely. There. And you can find a store at PetValue.com. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Amy, Thanks for, for coming. Thanks for having me. We hope to great. have you guys back again sometime soon. That would be great. We'd love it. All right. Everybody keep it right here. There's a lot more ahead, including information on the fifth annual No Kill Conference right here in Washington, D.C. Thanks everybody for sticking around. If you're a pet lover and you're looking for something to do this weekend, we have a great suggestion for you. The fifth annual No Kill Conference is underway at George Washington University. The event brings together experts in the animal sheltering, veterinary, and legal fields to discuss how we, as a nation and as a world, can save the lives of millions of animals from death in our shelters every year. And here to talk about the event is Joan Schaffner, the director of the Animal Law Program at the George Washington Law School. Joan, thank you so much oh, for coming today. Oh, thank you so today. much for having me. Uh, uh, very excited. Absolutely, and please introduce us to this yes. special kitty on your this lap. This is Spirit. Spirit is the feline ambassador to our uh, Animal Law Program at GW, and she helps me introduce most of the programs we have at GW, but including uh, the, fa the past five years, uh, she's joined me in introducing the No Kill Conference. Which is amazing to have a cat up yes. on stage. You were saying she does great up she there. She loves it. Like she's five the diva. She is the diva, and uh, you know she has a she is a great representative of the millions of animals that we're trying to save through yeah. the No Kill uh, Conference uh, and the programs that we promote. Uh, she was actually trapped uh, as a feral kitten with. Mm -hmm her mother and uh, uh, has lived now with me for nine years now so it's kind of wow. hard to believe we've been together that long. Aww. So. Well now tell us what all this is. Now when you guys first started back yes. in 2009. Nine. 2009 was the first year that the George Washington University became hosted the No Kill Conference with Nathan Winograd and mm -hmm. the No Kill Advocacy Center. Um, and at that point in time, I guess Nathan had done a program once in 2005. They mm -hmm. had about two dozen people out in California for the No-Kill Conference. In 2009, we sold out with over 300 people. Wow. Um, it w became an international conference. And in fact, this year, we're expecting upwards that we have 600 people registered, wow. uh, representing 45 states and nine different countries uh, wow. to be attendants at the NOCO conference this year. Wow. Yeah. Now, I mean, there you cover a lot of ground in right. these two days that you're there, but we, give us an idea yeah. of what it is that you guys do and what yes. is the goal of this? I mean, the name pretty much says it, but... Right. We, the goal is to create no-kill communities, really, well, certainly throughout this country and around the world. Mm -hmm. um, 
a theme, we have a theme each year. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2009, when we first started uh, five years ago with GW, the theme was uh, bringing sheltering into the 21st century mm -hmm. to try to talk shelters out of sort of using a kill mentality for animal control and in, in basically use life-saving measures. So mm -hmm. Nathan has created what he refers to as the no-kill equation. Mm -hmm. And it's a variety of mandatory programs that are designed to, number one, reduce the number of animals that come into the shelters by having, for example, high volume, low cost spay neuter programs, right. uh, trap neuter return programs to keep our community and feral cats out of the shelter because they're basically not adoptable, mm -hmm. um, and pet retention programs uh, to work with owners who feel they have to surrender their animals because of certain problems, but if you can work through those problems, they don't have to become homeless animals in the shelters. Mm -hmm. Then we have a group of programs, once the animal is in the shelter, to minimize the amount of time that they're there, to work to rehabilitate them, having medical and behavioral programs and training programs, as well as a robust fostering program mm -hmm. so the animals don't have to stay in cages while they're waiting to be adopted. Um, and of course, on the back end, it's very important for municipal shelters to work with local rescue groups to get the animals into those groups that can be adopted and of course have their own adoption programs be mm -hmm. open late in, you know, later into the evenings on weekends and doing programs throughout the community and really it's all about working with the members of the community mm -hmm. um, to come and save the animals. I don't think most people realize that each year about four million cats yeah. and dogs are killed in our shelters. Yeah which is a dramatic decrease from what it was in the 80s at around 20 million, right. but still we've it's got still a long way to go. Exactly. So thank you so much for, for introducing this. We will have, um, you have the information there on the screen. We'll also have this on our Pet Show Facebook page as well as on our blog. So hopefully people will, will go out, and this is not just for shelters, this is for everyone who's, an, who's a pet lover. So please take a look at it, okay? Thank you, Joan, for coming. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna take our last break, and when we come back, we'll have an animal with a remarkable story that you may wanna make part of your family. And welcome back to the Pet Show. It is time to meet our adorable adoptable this week from the Animal Welfare League of Alexandria. Today we welcome Ashley Young and the adorable Adele. Hi, Adele. Adele is 11 months old. Yes, she's almost a year. Um, she came to the shelter a few weeks ago, about two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, and she's come to us with Mange. Right. Uh, she was originally found as a stray. A nice family took her in for a few months and then she started losing her hair. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have money to treat her medically, so they came to us. Okay. Well, and just so everybody out there knows, I mean, this, you know, demodectic mange really does get a super bad rap. I mean, it definitely looks bad, but it's one of these things that is eminently very treatable. Um, it is not contagious to no. your other pets nope. or to the people in the household. So basically, you're dealing with a dog with no hair for a little while. This is caused yeah. by a mite called the demodex mite um, that burrows in the skin and gets in the hair follicles. That's why the hair falls out. But you treat it and that's a picture of what you see there the demodex might and they go down into the hair follicles and they make the hair fall out but again once you treat this the hair will come back she'll be a perfectly healthy dog and this is nothing that's going to have lifelong impl implications for her so don't let um, the bad skin throw you off for Absolutely. adopting this little girl because tell us about her personality uh, she's she's great she's playful she's good with other dogs um, she loves the water. We have a kiddie pool in the yard <laughs> and a sprinkler that she loves to play in. Um, she's already making great progress in, in her, you know, everything growing back. She has little tufts of hair now, so you're starting to see more of what she'll look like when she's fully yeah, recovered. Her little brindle coat. Yes, so. yes, she's going to be brindle and white. Oh, she's um, a pretty girl. We're looking for a foster parent for her. Okay. Um, and, could be a foster to an adopt situation. Mm -hmm. um, a foster parent to, to get her through um, basically the recovery and, and as soon as her hair is all back and she's off her medication, um, then we would adopt her out. Yeah. But and this yeah. is not a difficult thing to treat. I mean, this is usually a once or twice a day oral medication yes. and then a couple of times a week you're giving them a bath. This is not and a really a horrible treatment process just so everybody out there knows. Yeah. So now you guys have your pet photo contest still going on. Yes. There's still time to get in yes. there. There's still time <laughs> to win it all. So tell us about this. Um, it's our annual pet photo contest. Um, 
for our calendar that we put out every year, it's until the end of July. You still have time to get submissions in, and we take um, pictures of cats, dogs. If you have a guinea pig, we'd love to get you submit your picture, even a rabbit, um, hamsters, and whatever you got. Whatever and you got, a, you can a, a cover model. Yes, and your friends can vote, and um, the proceeds from that go back to the animals, so we can help treat animals like Adele and find them all homes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming today. Best of luck to you, little Miss Adele. Thank you for everybody for joining us. I'm Dr. Katie Nelson. Please don't forget to send your questions to us at petshow at news8.net. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Katie Nelson, and always please check out our Facebook page. We leave you with this week's Fur Fix, rare footage of wild baby gorilla twins at the San Diego Zoo in, in Rwanda. See you next week.